Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. think you could do it, but tell you to try when they talk. All I hope had to keep it alive. Spend a day in the Bronx, but you wouldn't survive. Can be low when I pop out, they know I've arrived. I go have conversations with Zoe. Don't tell me pull up and come say what you know. I've been up, I can count all them days in a row. We don't say what we do, we be making the show. They say I'll be the voice of the Bronx. We have Bronx playing with the guys that are out here. Can I get a year? Right where they at, try to diss me, I bet I don't even react Put a show on, I bet you somebody gon' yeah, yeah. I pick me a book up and drink me some water and Invest in the stock, all them on back in. Peace and love, world. welcome to another episode of Conversation with Zoe uh, We are at the end of Women's Month for me um, We have another amazing woman here in front of us Who does so many things So we have a lot of layers to unpack today But we have Bliss two times here uh, Who's an artist, model, media, host and performer uh, alum of the Fashion Institute of Technology. She has Vigalicious. Did I say right? Vigalicious. Veggielicious. Veggielicious mm -hmm. uh, with Lish, mm -hmm. uh, where she exposes audiences to creative plant based foodie style, lifestyle. And she has the Ramadan album out now. Out now. Welcome. Right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Thank Welcome, you. how are you? Thank you. I'm blessed and highly favored. Right. I know you're in the middle of Ramadan, and I remember you told me in the elevator that you felt drained, but how are you maintaining every day? Like, what's your day-to-day -day looking like? Uh, early mornings and not so late nights, actually. Right. You know, like, typically my nights sometimes can go really late, but this is a time period where I'm so focused. So they're actually ending. I don't let my days go into the next day anymore right. because I'm up so early, you know, I'm up right. at 5 AM and, right. you know, getting my hydration on, getting right, my right. prayer on. And yeah. Right. So what's the diet looking like during Ramadan? The diet is, I tend to keep a pretty strict diet, but the diet is like even more strict right now. Like, right. um, Pretty much every day since Ramadan started, it's been like salad with like avocados, sunflower seeds and craisins and cucumbers. That's right. been like my break fast right. situation. And then like I make things like navy bean soup from scratch with uh, right. homemade farina bread. It's like cornbread, but it's made with corn uh, cream of wheat. So right. it's better for you. Right. Um, it depends on the day. Like, right. you know, I find um, low vibrational foods. You can't have that this time. So if you're one of those people that just want to eat soul foods, pastas, like I had pasta right. today, but I couldn't even finish it because I've been fueling myself with a lot of bean dishes and stuff. Right. And a lot of a lot of tea. So I boil my own herbs, like mint leaves and right. cloves and all that good stuff. You know, right. cinnamon sticks, whatever it is. Some right. lemon juice and honey. And, you know, that's what I've been... Right. You know, you know, quenching my sugar, my taste for sugar. Initially, it was a taste for sugar. Now I don't even crave sugar. Right. Yeah. Like I say, oh, I want a snack, but nothing that I'll go to snack on will do it for me. So I literally don't take more than a bite. So, right, right, right. which is good. You know what I'm saying? You want to cut sugar? Fasting during Ramadan is a great time because, you know, when you're breaking your fast, you should really just be having water and tea. Right, right, right. Water, maybe some coffee. Right. You know, and what's the age that you you are allowed to or you start fasting? It depends. Everybody's different. Ideally, once you hit puberty. So once a girl starts her cycle or, you know, a guy, once he crosses over into that pubic stage, that's when you can start fasting. Right. right. So now if a girl gets her cycle really young, like 10 years old, like I have a friend, her daughter only fasts on a weekend because it's hard to get up so early, go have to right. function in school all day right. at 10 years old. No. But when you're like 16 by 16, you should be like, right. you ain't new to this, you true to this. Right. You know? So it really depends on a child. Right. You know, um, I want to go over two songs. OK. Right. Uh, I see you. Um, Allah is waiting for you to do more for him. I like that line. You do. I do. Interesting. What does that What does that line mean to you, or what does that lyric do for you? I just think that we just spend so much time worried about the opinions of men. Like on a grand scheme of things, like who are you? Who Who is he? Who is she? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. We have a whole almighty creator out there that gives us literally godlike power. Right. So why is it that we are so restricted with fear of the opinions of men? So that's what, like, and that was freestyled in a booth. Right. You know what I'm saying? In fact, that song kind of came about as, you know, a freestyle type situation, which is why I feel like, 
you know, yeah. And I and I speak to myself in that moment too, you know, right. we all fall victim, like being in the public eye and being right, right, scrutinized right. and being told like what you dress like, what you look like, how what you're doing is not Islam, it's haram, it's this, it's that. Right. It's like you have to kind of like filter out the noise and say, right. ah, I have a whole lot of people that beg to differ. And right. I feel like because I'm seceding to some capacity, right. And I'm not selling my soul. That means I must be doing something right. Right. And that's what that means to right. me. So the last line, the selling your soul part, mm -hmm. leaves us to the next song. The devil did it. Right. <sighs> Do you believe in the devil or is the devil of real? Of course. But the thing is, the devil's not. I think that the world, because of Hollywood, and then we think of this person living in a hellfire, just waiting for you to be condemned there to, to yeah. snatch your soul. And I think that we have to understand the realms in which we exist in. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. when we talk about a devil, right. you know, are we referring to jinns? Which I guess in a Christian faith, they may be called, say, demons. But jinns, we don't necessarily believe like are like just all bad mythical creatures. Like right. it's not like that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I do believe in a devil 110%. You know, when I pray every day, I open with saying, I, I seek refuge against Satan, the accursed. And that's me seeking refuge in Allah and right. God Almighty Himself. So, I absolutely do believe in a devil. Right. Um, I just think that we have to to believe in the devil is also to acknowledge you know the traits within ourselves that are reflectant of that devil yes you know because there's a lot of scriptures even in the bible that talk about the devil that are very prophetic or very they're not literal right they're you know what i'm saying they they're um kind of like parables if you will right and I think that people try to make it an actual mythical thing right. when there's a lot of substance mm -hmm. in the idea of what the devil is. So right. when we say, like, like back in the day, you look at movies, they're like, the devil made me do it. Right, right, right. That's why the song's like, they say the devil did it, but did I mean me? Am I, could I be really my enemy? Right. Because the reality is that we, most of us are on our enemy, right, you know, right, 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 which is true. why I love Ramadan because it makes us so intentional with our time. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. I like that a lot. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna get to where we're gonna get, but I want to go. I went through your Twitter, and it was hard. I usually pick five, but I picked eight this time. Really? Because it was just things that I was like, I gotta. I was like, oh my god, her. WCC my rants. Right. <laughs> But good rants though, because people see we're here to tell the truth. But people need to people need to check themselves sometimes. And you know what they say back in the day, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we just I just love it when a woman just, you know, talks her ish. You know what I mean? Okay. But also, you know, because people think like being in your soft or error or being feminine means like, well, I'm not gonna voice my opinion and tell you about yourself. Right. Even though and you need to be told about you yourself. Need to be you know told what I'm about saying? Like sometimes. accountability yeah. is important. You know what I mean? Very much so. We're gonna start here. Real ones respect it and reflect on it the next time before they contact you again. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? The reality is that like you can do a lot for people. You can put them in position, but the moment that you don't make yourself available, or if you say, "Hey," Um, like for me, my brand, like there's no, the only time you'll ever see me in somebody's club is either cause I'm paid to be there or like, maybe you see me out with Steph G a lot. Right, right, that's right. my, that's shout like out to Steph G. Shout out to my baby. I'll see you okay. soon. All right. But the reality is, and I go to check in on DJs. I need DJ Will to understand that I love you and I support you. And thank you for being the first DJ to play Bacon Soda on Power 105 and keeping me in rotation on, on a radar radio. And right. like, so that's when, if I go to a club, but then I'm in and out. Right. I don't have to say for that. But people feel like, oh, I'm doing a party here. Come through. And I'm like, I don't take the subway. And not that there's anything wrong with people that do, but I was assaulted down there. I don't trust it. I don't do the subway. Wow. So if I say, hey, I'm not charging you to come, but I do require round trip car service, that is my minimum. Right. And if you feel like offended by me saying, send me a car, 
at the end of the day, then that's like, that tells me you no longer respect my growth and where I am and understand the fact that I have promoters right now sending contracts that are, that are booking me for a thousand dollars to come host a party and stay at an event for them. You know what I'm saying? And sending car service right. and asking me for a rider. So if there's people who are not close to me that far out willing to do that for me, why is people that I, I allow so close to me, that I do so much for, that I introduce to so mm. many people, mm. I provide so mm. many opportunities for, why do you feel the most entitled? Right. I have people who are close to me trying to raise their prices on things that we do. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I can literally look at a list of things that I've done for an individual, checks that I've gotten them, platforms I've put them on that would not. And I hate to be the person that's like, you wouldn't have this if it wasn't for me, because I'll never say it, but I'll take notes and I'll distance myself from it. Right, right, right. You know, and I just feel like, you know, it's insulting. So if I say, hey... I cannot come because X, Y, and Z, or, hey, I don't want to be seen in that club environment, right. especially if there's nothing there for me. I want you to say, Dan, you know what? I was tripping. That's not like, Lish doesn't even go to those kind of clubs. Like right. she would never like think about it and just say, I wouldn't even invite her to that environment again. Right. Versus getting offended, like, oh, what you too bougie now? What you Hollywood? Or you don't even got a record on the Billboard Top 100s and you're already acting like, ah, ah, ah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, that's really what you think of me? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, like, you know what, Lish? My bad. I really wasn't thinking. Or, you know what? Even if you don't even agree with me. Like, you know what? If that's her stand, that's her boundary, I respect it. Because right. I respect you as an individual. And I respect the fact that you're growing. Right. So this goes into the next one, right? Mm -hmm. People who really want to see you win don't take offense to an occasional no. They don't. They don't. Slander is used to cause mischief in the community. Be careful. Purify your hearts. Mm-hmm. Purify your hearts. So in a song, we use the term backbiting a lot. Or actually, if you listen to the whole Robin album, I have this song called Can't Come With You. And I started like, can't come with ya, with ya, with ya, trying to get to Jenna. Jenna means heaven. Right. And um, in the verse, it's like, got some dirt then, put it in a napkin. I don't want to hear what happened. Don't you come around here with fitna. Fitna is the waswa, the whispers of the slinking devil. It's mm -hmm. the, the backbiting. Backbiting means that you may be talking about a person, and even though what I'm saying is true, I'm talking about behind that person's back, and it's nothing productive going to come out of this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm not discussing with you ways we can help this person. Right. I'm not discussing a solution. I'm just talking smack about the person for the sake of talking smack. That's backbiting. It's low vibrational. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. Mm -mm. And then there's slander. Then there's the, it's like, you're just flat out lying. Right. Because you're in your feelings, because you're insecure, whatever the reason is, you're just flat out lying. Right. So it can go two ways. And it's like, what is the purpose? When you open up right. your mouth, and this is something I'm, I'm talking to myself when I say this, you have to be very intentional with words. Yes. We're not, like, what are you hoping to cause? Because I'm going to tell you something, right? I was working with somebody and I heard her gossip about some of her peers in there. And I'm like, wow, we're new to working to each other. And if you're talking about peers this way that you work with, people that you know I know mm -hmm. this way, Mm -hmm. Dang, I can imagine how you talking about me. Right. I can imagine. And then I'm also turned off because I'm like, oh my God, this is so unprofessional. Right. Like you're just getting to know me. We're not even friends. Right. So for so for me, it's like, what are you trying to do? Because now I know the way you think of this person. We're working together. Right. So are you trying to pull me away from not talking to this person anymore? Right. Like, what is your objective when you have that low vibrational conversation with me? Right. That's so true. Like, what is your objective? What are we, what kind of paycheck are we hoping to get out of this conversation? Mm -hmm. What is it that you're, like, that's why I'm like, mm-mm. Done with that. Yeah, can't, that's why I was like, don't you come here with, a, like, when I say, don't you come here with that fitna because I can't come with you. Like, right. don't come here with the drama. Right. I'm not going there. Right. I'm trying to get to heaven. And heaven doesn't only mean when I die, I want to go to this right. place in the heavens. No, I'm trying to get to heaven. What heaven means for me is luxury, money, good homes, friendships, and all walks of life. Right. That is heaven for me in this life. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get. Right. I'm with that. Okay? I'll drink to that. Shout out to Riri. Okay? Hating 
someone who doesn't even know you exists is so weird. Especially weird when the person you're hating on behalf of doesn't even know you exist either. I think that a good example of that is Barty Gang and the Barbs. I hate, I hate when I see the Barbs come from Cardi B. Somebody be cool because number one, this is somebody I watch, you know, grow. Someone I know personally, someone who is I know is a sweet person, someone who like I remember, and I'll forget this live she did when she was like, Yeah, people trying to crush my mic, and it's so disheartening because like when I'm on the way up, you always think of who you would want to do a song with this person and that person and like your dream person. Right. Like, how dare you? So when you know someone is a sweet person and they just try to win, they're not focused on what the next person has. And I just feel like, yo, why would you hate on this person who's literally a woman trying to win or vice versa? Right. Barty gang, bullying. Nick, Nikki's an icon. Right. Like, no matter what you think about her personality, Nicki Minaj will always be a pinnacle that a standard that anybody in the rap game, female or male, should hope to reach. She's a global icon. Nicki's tour can decide to do a surprise pop up trip in Japan right Right. now. And Chung Lee will fill up an arena. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like. The whole body game, like leave that to the girls who's getting the the, the coins. You right. know, it's 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 cool for marketing. It's cool for this and the third. That's cool, yeah. but it's like it's weird to me. Even though, shout, yo, that new Cardi song, like right, I was right. like, oh, that was such a Libra thing for her to do, and I loved it. But. As a fan, I like watching the girls just do their thing. How you said earlier, like talk they smack. But the mean people in the comments go too far. Talking about people's children, talking about their insulting them, not only insulting their looks, but like talking about taking low jabs and about their marriages. And Mm -hmm. and I'm like thinking to myself, like, look at all these. And you know me, once in a while I go down a rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, you're someone's baby mama. I see all these children, no daddy here. Oh, so mm. you're hating on her and her <laughs> marital issues. Right. And you a whole baby. You, not, not, you know what I'm saying? Everybody right. makes their mistakes. Right, right, right. But it's like, you know, like, sweetheart, y'all going hard. We'll argue back and forth. They don't even know you exist. Don't know you by name. Right. You feel me? I feel you. So, yeah, I think it's really weird how invested people get into people's lives who don't know that they exist. This is a good one. Learning to not allow a few bad attitudes to ruin your day is an art. Yes. Very true. It is. And where, where I want to, I want you to expound on this, but where, where it resonates with me is, you know, sometimes kids, you know, they're going through it at home with their parents. I'm, I'm in a high school, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's nine o'clock. You got a whole day ahead of you. Like, you're here now. I understand you were late, you woke up late, you got into it with your mom, like, you know, somebody said something to you in school. Like, those are all things that I want you to put behind you mm-hmm. and look forward to the positive. Like, there's a beautiful day outside, sun is shining, let's move forward. Mm-hmm. And that goes to being intentional with how you talk to people, mm-hmm. and how you say things. So, like, you got to use that. I use that as an opportunity to try to build with you, mm-hmm. build a relationship with you and try to uplift you because you're already down. Mm-hmm. Right, so they always say, "Don't kick a person while they're down." Mm-hmm. Right, that's my moment to uplift you. So I'm very intentional in how I talk to the kids in my school. That's actually beautiful because I feel like sometimes teachers can be bullies. Mm. I find a lot of you know educators, especially um, in all grades. I was gonna say in high school sometimes, but like in all grades, because I went through something you know, recently that I witnessed in elementary school. And I feel like, you know, there's so many teachers, especially in New York City, that became teachers just because they have a degree and whatever their career plans didn't work out. Right. So now they here they are with our precious jewels and they're they're killing them. Right. You know, they how many rappers, success stories involve a teacher that said that they would never make it. Right. You know, and it's like, how dare you as an educator, someone that our taxpayer dollars fund to have a career, we're put in the hands of our future generation. Um, excuse me. We're putting the future generation in your hands and you're destroying them. You're bullying them. So now they got a teacher that pretty much hates them, that's coming down on them. And then they got to deal with peers, the opinion of men. Because they're not mature enough to be secure within themselves. And then you never know what they're going home to, what kind of insecurities, food insecurities, whatever they're going home to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Right. So I love that you said that you're really um, thoughtful on how you speak right. to your students. Very tasty, cheesy, onion, all of the above. One word to describe it, scrumptious, right? We from the town, so we just gonna say pause first, but it melts in your mouth. You just love it, you know what I'm saying? I wear this shirt to sleep. How much I love Savage Street Burger, man. It's near and dear to my heart. You see the logo? It's near to my heart. That's how we do it, man. Peace. Kids go through so much adversity every day. You know what I'm saying? So and I feel bodies like- bodies are changing. Right, bodies are changing, you know. Everybody's financial situation is different. So you may, you may not be switching fits like everybody else, but you just make and do with what you have. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely um, I try to love on the kids as much as I can every day. You know? Yeah. Next one. Mofos be lying and then post all the truth online. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Right. Like, because the people, you know, folks cannot stay off the internet. Right, facts. Oh, da da da. And then you be like, you keep watching, you watch a person long yeah, enough, yeah, the you, truth you, shall truth set uh -huh. you free. Uh huh. Now, see, that's your mama bins. You know what I'm saying? I get it though. You know That's what I'm saying? Cool. But we don't care. Like, listen, you. It's like we really yeah, don't care. We really don't but care. It's just like, why? Why are you always lying? <laughs> yeah. Why are you, you know, always you know lying? Saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up with you? I no. get it. <laughs> <laughs> but people show you what they think of you when it's time to show up for you. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a big fact, especially when the event that you're doing may not be free or it may be your birthday. Um, right. Yeah, it's true because there's people that show up to what they want to show up for, you know, right. and if it's if they always got an excuse to show up for you, they show up at the end. Right. Like you, you pay attention to that. How do they show up? Like I'm one of those people that. How do they show up? Yeah. How? Mm -hmm. And I mean that from physical to the end, from the outside in, right. you know, like you, you know, you, you start to pay attention. You start to learn when people really respect you, right. you know, and I, ha and I'm still learning that, yeah. you know, right. like, I'm not going to lie. I took a beating in this industry this last year. I'm not going to, I'll be thinking about quitting like every other week. Right. <laughs> That's right. how Miss right. Steffi came so close. Cause right. I be on the phone with that every day. She right. like, not for that shit unless you did it. You know, right, like, right. so, because it's like, I think that's the most challenging thing in the industry right now. Right. When you get to certain levels where everyone's doing something. Right. And people are trying to find what is their something. Right. And um, I think that people chase, e like, industry events so much. And not until, like, I started throwing, like, my birthday this last year was like crazy for me because and even this brunch I just did like I remember Jasmine the girl who I hired to do the PR for the event she said to me Lish this can you could never do another event here it's too small stop being humble and it was just like wow because you know we all have that anxiety right, like right, no right. one's gonna show up I saw that tweet you was like I can't sleep if think about this brunch I saw that tweet yeah Wait, what happened? You, you, your tweet said, I can't sleep thinking about this brunch tomorrow. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't even remember. I got to go through my Twitter because I, I probably need to clean it up. Uh, yeah. No, it's cool. It's moving there. It's moving. It's moving over there? It's moving. It's, I be like, oh, what do yeah. I be talking about? It's on brand, too. And you pop your ish, but you also give game, but you also, you know, get things off your chest, for sure. Yeah, like, because, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where, like, sometimes people who you didn't even think were going to show up for you do, and the people you expect to don't. So that's a very big, yeah, that's right. really big. And that's not just entertainment industry, or whatever. It's regardless right. of what you do in life. Right, when it's time to show up for you, yeah. Right. So how was your childhood? I was blessed. I was blessed. Right. You know, I have both my parents, and I still have both my parents. And God willing, I'm going to continue to have both my parents. So right. I was really blessed. I had a lot of people who loved me growing up. I had, like, uncles that were, like, second and third and fourth dads. Right. And, you know, I had a grandmother who was, like, a true grandmother, not these new age grandmommies. Like, hey. <laughs> now, my grandmother is still a, my grandmother is still a G. You know, she right, right, right. tell you you look a mess when you look a mess. Right, right, right. Tell her like it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I had a, 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 I have no complaints about my child. Like we all have complaints, but right. like nothing crazy. Right. Where did you grow up? 
So like my stomping ground was like New York, like pre-K kindergarten, first, like little. But then like when my parents had divorced, my mom took me to Maryland um, and then I came back to New York. And then like we went to I went to high school in Maryland. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was like a gypsy. See, I have a song called Shame the Devil where I was like, um, I say... <laughs> Man, I moved a lot. My ancestors must be Fulani because you know that the Fulani people are the nomadic people of Africa mm-hmm. because I have moved a lot. Right. So, right. yeah. How would you describe your high school self? So I went to two high schools. When I was at Old Mill, let's go, L-E-T-S-G-O. Um, cheerleader, like, in my head. Right. Um, I think that version of myself was super cool. Super dope. And it's so funny because I have reunited with a friend from high school. And when I was, I was dating this guy, I was dating this guy. Martin, he was like, yo, so tell me what Alicia was like in high school. And she kind of described me as, she was like, yeah, I asked Dejan to go with me to homecoming. And he told me he was already going with Lish. And I was like, whoa. And she was like, so she described me as one way. And I was like, I don't really remember my life being that way. I remember just being cool and low key. But my mom always dressed me so nice. Like I always had so, and that's the thing why I say I was so blessed because I didn't even realize like, I I wasn't even into clothes and stuff as much in high school. But my mom shops. Right. You know, so I always had like fly, fly stuff. And you know right. what I'm saying? And then I also had like a sister who worked at Macy's, like, because right. she's like much older than I am. Right. And like, I was still her shoes. Right. So Ty's like, so she'd be at work. So I was so cute. Oh my God, I would go to school so cute. So that was me at Old Mill, which was on one side of Anne Arundel County. But then I moved like two towns over to Arundel to a school so that was like very different. Old Mill was like, a melting pot, white, black, Koreans. We all hung out together, Latino. We all hung out together. Right. But when I moved to Odenton, to Piney Orchard, okay, when I moved and went to Arundel High School, I don't know what camera I should be talking to. Right. And it was like 55% white, 45% other. Life changed for me significantly in trying to find my space. So my junior and senior year was very, like, interesting for me trying to right. find my space i was in theater but then when i was on a step squad i felt like that gave me my something right but it was like it was it was just an awkward time for me you know right. what i'm saying like it was a very awkward time for me but i loved it because i feel like you know i was blessed the high school state of our football fields and everything homecoming right. games was like lit it was right, like going right, to right. a college game yeah and i I didn't realize it until like again leaving like wow i really grew up in a bubble right you know what i mean like so high school me and at arundel i don't really look at myself like i i was i was i didn't feel like i was that girl at all i still had the, the body of a teenage boy like mm. you know the curves was the curving right. <laughs> you know the breasts never showed up right like ugh, it was horrible okay right. but you know I had a good outside of school life that kind of made up for it, though. Right. You know, like I was cool. Like right. I was able to go to Canada and shit. Like I was, you know, I was. Right, right, right. I went to New York for weekends just to get my hair done and came back. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, yeah. High school was cool. I mean, I didn't get to go to my prom, and I know my people be trying to tell me to like get over it, but my my stepfather didn't let me go to my prom, so like that outside of that, like high school. You know, high school life was cool. And why he didn't let you go? I grew up with very strict Christian parents. Well, really, not my mom. It was him. And I think, I don't know why she told me to ask him. My dad was going to drive down from New York to take me to my prom. But I felt too embarrassed because, like, if I was going to go to prom, how are you the girl that dressed nice all the time, but you don't got, like, the flyest prom gown? Right. You know, like, you weren't properly prepared. Right. And I was just like, forget it. And I felt bad because a junior asked me to prom. And I was like, yes, he bought the tickets and everything. And I was going to go. And I felt bad. I was too embarrassed to tell him what really happened. So he probably thinks to this day that I stood him up, which I didn't do. I just wasn't allowed to go. Right. Unfortunately. Right. So when were you introduced to the Muslim religion? As a teenager. A teenager. Yeah. 
I found my first Quran in my grandmother's apartment, which I currently own now. Okay. Mm. Um, and I t- I don't know what made me just want to take it and start reading it. And, you know, I, I just did. And it was kind of like I already knew what to do when I got it. It was just, yeah. it just felt like home. It felt, it felt familiar. Right. And with it feeling familiar, you know, I just adapted you know, I guess. Oh, back to that white high school. I got suspended right. a week for trying to wear a whole, a whole head scarf because right. <laughs> they're strict about the no headgear policy in those suburban schools. Like, right. hey, um, without a note from a parent. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. It just it's one of those things that kind of found me. Right. You know, right. what does your faith mean to you? Um, I don't know. It's a trick question. It it. It's the way of life for me, yeah. you know, like I don't I'm not one of those people that, you know, it's not like church where you it's uh, something that you do every week and, you know, like you put on a show and uh, it's not one of those type of things. Right. It's it's one of those things that I find to be like very personal yeah. and not until people started trying to coin me as a Muslim rapper did I even talk about it much because I, I was so annoyed that people would try to put me in a box because I didn't want to have my, my my cleavage smiling at everyone and because yeah. I chose to keep the, the bundles and inches to myself. You feel me? Right. Like So now that I've you know, kind of honed a little, like I kind of poked fun at the masses and said, you know what, bump it, I'm gonna just do a Ramadan album since Mariah Carey doing these Christmas albums every right, year. Right, right. They don't put her in the box. I'm gonna do right. a Ramadan album. I'm for that. And I, I was like, and but within the Ramadan album, I said, I want it to be a universal message though for everybody. Yes. I don't want it to be some Islamic innuendos and I don't want it to be a bunch of Arabic. I don't want it to be, I want it to be something that like my people could vibe with. Right. So my faith, I feel, I said, it, it makes me feel like I'm home. Right. But I feel like as a black woman in America, who has been stripped away from so much, I feel like my faith brings me back kind of to that home. Islam brings me that. I love that. Yeah. Femininity through modest fashion. Yes. So where does the confidence come from not to conform? Because I know I look better. Like, the thing about it is this. People call wearing nothing fashion these days. And I'm like, that's not fashion, that's scraps. Fashion is when you can put, yeah, like fashion is when you can put the layers on together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it's kind of like a man. Men are a great example of fashion. You know why? Because they're like, when I was styling, I started with men. You know why? They put on a t-shirt. They put on a button up. Then they may put a cardigan on top of that button up so that the, the sleeves and the cuff show and the perfect examples of what it is to style, the belt. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the jeans, layers. You know what I'm saying? Or if it's summertime and they want to wear shorts, men that, you know, don't want no question, they may wear longer shorts and they may have a certain level of socks that come up high with the right. laces. They switch out the laces. And like that is styling. That's fashion. And I am an FIT girl. I love fashion. And even though I don't always look the part, I feel like, you know, wearing less is not more. More is more in the scheme of fashion. Yes. And if you're really a confident individual and you know you that girl and you really want to, like, stand out, like, putting it on and making it work together and sashaying in a room. It's like you're gliding, you stand out, you glow. I feel like that is a reason to be confident. And and is there times where I feel like completely out of place and out of sync? Absolutely, hello. None of my friends dress like me. So when I tell them, what are you wearing? It's not because I want to look like you. It's because I want us to be some kind of in sync. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because right, right, right. I'm liable to wear something that one of my homegirls done sold for me and right. have a long ass. Right, right, because right. any given day, it could be a gown for me. Right. So some people, what a gown is, is like a regular dress for me. Right. You know, that's why, like, you got to put that stuff. Like, shout out to Twin CEO. You, he mad at me right now. But one of the first things he said to me is like, yo, every time I see you, you put that stuff on. So modest fashion... I feel like it's just a natural inclination to style. Right. You know what I mean? And 
I think that femininity, like back in the days, like women used to wear pantyhose. They didn't just have their bare legs out looking all ashy. Like it's just something elegant about a woman. Mm. If she's going to wear a skirt that is above the knee, you put on pantyhose, even if it's below the knee, it goes to the right. calf. Something elegant about a pantyhose or a fishnet stocking or, you know what I mean? Proper undergarments. So your cellulite's not peeking. Through. Oh, it's natural for a woman to have these things. Yes, but everyone doesn't need to see it. Talk about Proper panty lines. Like, I remember this woman, European woman, had these shopping bags going to her luxury store. She had on a white, looked like a, a dress that looked like a slip. She looks fabulous, by the way. But then there was the panty line. And I was just like, oh, wash the whole outfit. Throw it out. Throw it away. Like, you took an outfit that looks like it was here. And you brought it down there with that raggedy pan because you can have on a proper foundation. Right. And I feel like women are not teaching their daughters and we're not teaching our sisters and tapping them on the shoulder and saying, hey, you need proper foundations. You stylists are slacking. You stylists are slacking because you're not putting a proper foundation on these women that you're styling. Yeah. You're allowing them to hang all over the place. And it's not about, oh, body shaming. It's about, no, the class and the secrecy. Oh, not bre like rearing right. it all. Beyonce would never. Right. <laughs> you right. know? Like, I feel like the whole time I was just like swaying, like, yeah. like back and forth. Because you right. have to paint a fact, like yeah. you gotta paint a picture for people. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like when you get picture dressed. Painted. Yes. You know, and even when you're just doing the most simple, like like DJ Nyla, I love hers. Like she's a perfect example of somebody with a lot of style. Like even some with somebody who's like tomboyish, she's still very feminine. Right. You know what I mean? Like her, the way she puts everything together, her glow, right. her demeanor, her speech, her poise. Right. And I think that women don't take note of uh, examples of that clean glass because there's so much glorification of the the, the muddy waters mm. that it's like the clean glass, it's, it's going untouched. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm parched. I'm parched. I love this. <laughs> Uh, this is amazing. Uh, so, remained a covered girl within the industry, writing and performing songs with clean lyrics. Yes. So now you not you not only embody and and show, but you also speak it. I right? try. You try. I try. You don't say struggle or whatever. Right. But you're intentional with your words. I try to your be lyrics. very intentional. Yeah. Yes. Once in a while, though, there's those songs here and there that peeped out that was like I was just having fun and it was like right. freestyles. And, you know, when that happens, um, that's when you get the N word a little bit. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like my song, Bacon Soda, you know, it was like bacon soda niggas always chasing that dope bacon, bacon soda niggas want girls that they can't afford. I heard you. Like that song was like right, right, very right. freestyly. I was having fun. I was in the right. studio. My boy Ali, my girl, what's her name? Uh, oh, KMD was there. Like, right. so it was kind of a vibe. So right. it became, so, so once in a while I do throw a song out that it's like, I was just having fun. So I may have thrown like, the n-word in there or something but right. like profanity is it's like what like i'm sorry are we not informed of the english language we don't got no other words to use like right. i get it you know what i'm saying or right. like i like to throw in language like words from different languages sometimes and right. stuff like a little bit of french a little bit of spanish a little bit of arabic and you know what i'm saying like i have right. the song that i wrote I haven't recorded yet i have a little tie in there you right. know like it's when people limit their lyrics to very simplified vulgarity, the same monotonous thing that everyone else is right. doing. It's like, oh, what did Kanye say? You a customer. You ain't a customer going through customs. You ain't even nowhere. I, right. I be like, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're so limited. Right. Oh, I can't really. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. But on a on a higher note, I do try to be intentional in my words just because of the fact that I feel like we all complain about, oh, the, these award shows used to be for children. Well, guess what? There's artists like myself who make music that's palatable for all audiences that, you know, your children can be in a car with you. You can blast it. It's feel good. It's a vibe. There's a message. There's all these different dynamics of the music that I produce. Right. And, 
you know, here I am falling on deaf ears a lot of times. Right. So I feel like if I'm consistent in keeping the message clean, when someone finds a song that they like, they don't need to contact me for the clean because it's already clean. You can just spin it on whatever right. station. You can just snatch it. And yes, you can slide into my DMs or email me or go to lish2x.com and submit a request and all those different things and snatch my song and use it for your podcast, use it for your sitcom because you, there's no editing that needs to be done. Right. You know, so yeah, there's a there's a little bit of method to my madness. That and the fact that I really do believe that there needs to be a level of refinement within women. You know, every sexy red is great at what she does, but everybody doesn't need to try to be sexy red. Right. Ice Spice is great at what she does, but everybody doesn't need to try to be Ice Spice. Right. You know, and where's the example for the young ladies who, you know, are choosing, with the exception of Lady London, shout out to her. Where's the example for the the ladies who don't feel comfortable like that, but they are submitting to that because they feel like those are the girls that are winning. Those are the girls that the guys are going after. Those are the girls getting spoiled. Wow, young Miami gets to all these lifestyle, these luxury things, and she's being taken care of. And, right. and here I am trying to be this good girl, and I can't even get a guy that wants to take me on a date and not ask me to pay half the damn bill. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> yeah. so where is that? Where's the girl for them? Hello, hi, I'm here. My name is Lish 2 x I'm available on all streaming platforms. And yeah, here she is. <laughs> here she is. Yeah, page me, beat me if you want to reach me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What does music mean to you? Oh, my God. It's in my veins. It's the beat of my heart. It's the sound of my digestive tract after I've received my nourishment. It is the... <sighs> It is the exhale after the air that I've inhaled has been filtered. It's it's a lot. It's all of that. It, it's yeah. you know it it embodies me. Right. I love it. I love that. So this is for like my non-Muslim people, right? Okay. So as a non-Muslim, what are some ways we can respect and support your religion? Um. Or like practices or boundaries or. Like, like, I like practices of, oh, this is a good one. I say this all the time. Like, okay, so boom. I'm out and about. I'm out on a scene. We become familiar with each other and stuff like that. But we're not fr like we're not close like that. I don't know you for years. You don't gotta always try to like like hug up on me. I don't like that. Like even like photographers, they see you at events, they start getting comfortable. They want to go in for a hug. Like take your pictures and keep it moving. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and there's no shade. I don't. It's not me trying to be bougie or anything like that. I just don't like the, the excessive touching. You're passing me in a party. You got to put your hand around the waist. Like, if I was a man, would you need to do this to get by? Like, right. so I think that one of the number one things is the excessive need to want to touch, hug, pat. Like, that is key, major key for me. Right. Secondly, I would say if I don't volunteer to speak about my personal life, don't ask. Right. You know, I think that one of the things that people have become almost insulted if you don't share every bit of yourself because of social media, people are so used to having mm -hmm. so much access. Right. And to, to you before they even meet you. They have all these opinions of you without even knowing you. Right. So if you don't post every life achievement, they think they're not happening. And I think that for me, like, I like to keep some mystery. I think that's a part of femininity. Right. And I think that respecting just those boundaries you know what right. i'm saying like i don't got my hair covered so don't don't worry about how my hair is styled if i'm not talking about it like if i say pardon i got a headache because i just got my hair braided then let me share that right. you know but like why, when people ask like ex, like crazy questions all the time like that's it but if you're interested then say you're coming from a perspective of it interest or you have a legitimate question and then also understand that there's a time and a place you know what I mean because I'm not perfect at all you know if I was so perfect then you wouldn't see me on them couches with staff right, right, right. <laughs> right. but you may right. see me you know say it you know I like to you know what I'm saying but I think that also understanding the fact that I'm not perfect and I'm not the token you know Muslima either 
You know, I'm not trying to be, I try to embody who I am. And my faith is something that is a part of who I am, but I'm not the walking example. The walking example was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. Like that was the walking example. I am not that. You know, I am not Jesus. He already walked his walk. I am not none of the people, Abraham, Noah, Moses, I am not them. So when you look at me and you see me doing something that may not be perfect, mind your business. Facts. Period. Boy, I'm for it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite scripture from the Quran? Or like favorite yeah. you know, parables or I like to say, um, after difficulty comes ease. I think that that's one of the most. Damn, somebody said that to me recently. I say that all the time. Oh, it might weird. be. It's definitely on that Twitter chain because I tweet oh. that at least every few months. You know what? It wasn't said to me, but it was it was a a freeway interview. He's Muslim, right? And he 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 buried both of his children. Yeah, like in within the yeah, recent Allah, years. May Allah grant him. And I, and I know he's you know healing and but when he said that I was listening to that yesterday, and and then you just like this is like that universal confirmation. But wow, like after difficulty comes ease. Right. You know, there's so many people who, and this is why I see you. I opened up the Ramadan album Reloaded with the song I See You because I felt that that is a song that could help somebody who was maybe struggling with depression, maybe going through the woes of life. They're struggling with drug addiction and whatever it is, insecurities. It's never that bad that you have to take your life. The moment will pass. He broke up with you. He didn't like you. He didn't love you. Someone else will. This moment will pass. That hurt will, will will leave you one day and you'll feel like, wow, I'm so embarrassed that I was even crying over that person. Right. They didn't even deserve access to me, let alone right. my tears. Right. You know what I mean? So after difficulty comes ease. After difficulty comes ease. So the single mother who's like working multiple jobs and she's trying to figure out how she's going to get uh, her child, I don't know, sneakers for school or whatever the case may be. After difficulty comes ease. Like, look at all these these athletes and I'll use I don't like to like talk about my personal life so much but like one of the things that that man that I had married says is like his son got drafted to like the Cowboys and it changed like his entire life and he made a lot of sacrifices up to that point he's like my fa- his previous family made a lot of sacrifices before he got drafted to the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? When he left Ohio State University as a superstar before he even played on the Cowboys field. But be all the things that led up to that point, like they've embodied a lot of struggles before that point. Right. And now it's like options of what house you want to sleep in tonight. You know what I'm saying? So you never know where God is going to give you your blessings. You just got to understand that um, after difficulty comes ease. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Message to your younger self. (laughs) Again? What did I say last time you asked me that question? Do you remember? remember. Where'd that interview go? I have it. Mm. I have it. Maybe you're going to have to press rewind. Yeah. Message to my younger self. Um, I think that like some of the things I said in this interview, like mm-hmm. literally just learning how to be confident and secure in who I am and, you know, keeping some things to myself, mm-hmm. you know, keep the, a scripture from the Bible. Keep your say so. Excuse me. Keep your say so in your heart. Like you have to. Sometimes keep your say so in your heart because when you speak things, people don't like people don't always talk about the manifestation of the tongue or the power of the tongue tongue. and how when you speak things, it is a prayer. Sometimes you're saying unbeknownst to you. So I think that I would have guarded my tongue a lot more. I would have thought several times before I spoke in a lot of a lot of situations. Right. Yeah. It just came back to me what I wanted to. So I wanted to speak about femininity a little bit. Mm-hmm. And why are we, why is it like maybe social media and whoever's agenda it is, why are we trying to push away from it? I feel like feminism was is one of the enemies of femininity. 
I think that feminism is a plague to our community. And I think that a lot of people are professing feminism without understanding what it has become. When feminism, like I told black women particularly a lot, like that was not our issue. That was not our fight. What you have to think about is a hundred years ago in this here country in the West, that women only had one degree more right than a slave or a sharecropper. When she got married, she became a man's property. That's why she took his last name. So as a white woman who is oppressed by that white man during a time that they had a dark history, this country did, you know, slavery, all these laws, like a dark history, I think that there was a lot of things that needed to happen. They didn't have the right to vote. They didn't have a lot of, you know, equalities that bred the femini feminism movement, but it went too far to now women are trying to compete with men to the point where we're dismantling the family structure. We're dismantling the natural order of things. Like there's a reason why there's male and female leagues for in sports. There's a reason why, you know, I have ovaries and he has testicles. There's a reason why I, uh, most women don't grow beyond a certain height. And there's a reason why, you know, Shaquille O'Neal being as tall as he is, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of peers in the NBA he can say is of that height, but we don't know any women that tall. There's a reason why male and female, there's two X's and there's an X and a Y. We are not the same. No matter how much the world wants to tell us we can't be the same, we are not. And it started with that Nike commercial. And I remember when I was, I must have been probably in first grade. Oh, it was a Michael, that, if anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better. It was a Gatorade commercial, Michael right. Jordan, correction. Right. And it was a white woman in Michael Jordan. And I remember that. And I remember feeling that commercial. It was well shot. It was very cinematic. And I think that it's cool because I was one of those girls that like, you know, Babs the Bunny from making a band. One tough chick. My oh, flow was not to be. you just went to Babs? Yes. That was my song. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You Damn, know what she man. goes, one tough chick. My flow is not to be upped with. Send yeah. the word out to them that you quit. Wanna holler in the kitchen. What you find the dresser? Or <laughs> oh, you in the closet. But that, the thing uh, about it is, yeah, there was, a, it was a movement yeah. of women talking about how tough they are. Right. How this they are, how yeah. body body they are. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Only female in my crew, and I kick sh like, uh -huh. do say what? Mm -hmm. Like all of that. It was like, which is cool, but Biggie said it best in the movie. I don't know how true it was. He said it to Kim, like, that's cool, but men want to hear you say something sexy, more enticing. Yeah. All that shoot him up, bang bang. That's cool. You could rap like yeah. us, but they didn't want that then. Right. Even still, they didn't want that, and and I think that you know. Women losing a sense of confidence, self-esteem. It's like they feel like they got to be like men to get the respect of men when they don't realize their strength and femininity. Mm -hmm. And I think that men, you know, are very feminine in these days. <laughs> I was about to use the S word, but I didn't want to use the S word. They're so feminine, so Yo, feminine that's... and absent minded. Oh my it's like gosh. who raised these guys? Mm -hmm. I can't even call them men. Who raised these boys? Mm -hmm. You know, boys to men. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, it's so crazy because it was like, yo, the dating scenes, basura. Like, basura. I'm so old school. Like, I, I, I'm used to doors open. Things can't, I can't even believe that, like, 50 50 is like a real conversation. Mm. Like, I have male friends that, like, treat me a certain way. My cousins, my daddy opens my car doors for right. me. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, so it's just like so weird to me. Like, wow, you girls are really sleeping with men who wouldn't even think enough to hold a door open for you going into a restaurant. He's walking in before you. Like, I just cringe watching people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, and I never forgot, like, and I hate to, I'd be embarrassed. Like, so I used to say, I'm not going to tell you who he is because he's on the show. And I never forgot you can tell me off here. Yeah, I never forgot how. And this is like my first boyfriend when I moved back to New York after high school. Well, after, anyways, after I came back from Maryland. And he was so polite. 
I would we go to a restaurant. If oh, I have to go to the ladies' room, he would stand up at the table. Like that was like a whole new level of chivalry. And then when I came back, he would stand up to let me sit down. And I mean, like things like that for a lady almost makes you like melt if you know what it is. Right. It's like, wow. Like that to me is impressive. Right, right. right. Like I can't even tell you the name of the restaurant we were in. Right, right, right. I remember that though. Right. You know what I'm saying? I remember. Um, I couldn't hang out after we left dinner because I had other plans. Right. And it was at Lasuk. And he was like, I was like, well, you can put me in a car at Lasuk. It's fine. He goes, I'll walk you to Lasuk. And I thought that was so cute. Because right, right, right. <laughs> it was it was like maybe like a short, like maybe nine minute walk, 10 minute right, walk. Right, right. But it was just like, so it, it's like little things like that that I think is kind of a lost art from the men taking charge. Right. Like, he set this tone for everything from where we met, the time, to how we departed, him seeing me off into the... Like, I think that things like that, men take the charge, but they're not taking the charge anymore. Right. Women are taking the charge now, and men are complaining and calling them out their names and da 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 but it's like, you guys are the leaders. You guys are the head. This right. is a position that God gave you by right. birth. And you're not assuming a position anymore. You don't want to be providers and protectors anymore. Right. You don't want to... And women, you know, they talk this, oh, controlling, oh, you're insecure. If you think this and a third, no, that's not true. Like, if you respect yourself and you respect that man, if you want to be a wife. And that's another thing. Women are being brainwashed into saying, I don't want to get married because they, they got the stupidest reasons. So you like being milked for free? Mm -hmm. You like giving years of your life to somebody who can literally pick up and leave you for the next thing, you know, smoking at any given moment? Right. You like just being a baby mama with no, like, honor and dignity of having the title as a wife? Like, like the that there goes the refinement. Femininity is just so many different layers to it. Down to, like, yes, the way that I dress. And not even, I don't have certain conversations that I have with my girlfriends in front of men. Right. Like, a man would never hear me speak a certain way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. there's just certain, there's a level of, there's a level of mystery that needs to be Tell there. Me, man. Even your man, even your husband. You don't need like girls nowadays want to speak on speakerphone with their girlfriends uh -huh. and spit and drink he, henny. Crazy. Like, like, like the thing is, why does he need he should not hear what you and your girlfriends are talking about? That's not his business. Okay. And I'm pretty sure she don't want him knowing everything, but y'all so this is my best friend. No, he's not your best friend. He is your man. Thank He's your husband. It's Thank different. Mm -hmm. No different than a man have a certain conversation. Like now, like you said, in certain platforms, men are getting straight to the point. Mad vulgar. Asking women very personal questions about their sexuality, right. acts that they perform, and women literally engaging in a conversation, which is fine. I get it if you're entertainment, but I'm talking about regular basic bitty bro. Bitty, I heard bitty in a minute. Yeah. yeah. And you know, say I don't curse, so I use all the old and yeah, 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 You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, we bringing them all back. You know, you know what I'm saying? They never left me. Uh huh. Some of them new to me. Uh huh. So I'll be like, oh, I like that. We are bring that one back. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But yeah, so I just, femininity is just so important. And I, I feel like the moment, I, I sometimes I would think to myself like, man, where that island that Jay-Z bought for Beyonce? Because is it populated yet? Can I live there and get my own community of people who understand male-female relationships and how a family, like how the community is in a disarray because the family structure is in a disarray? Mm -hmm. And it's because, you know, people don't understand their position, you know, like... And then people try to tell me, like, oh, you only think that way because you're Muslim. They tell you you got to be submissive to a man. And I'd be like, no, my innate nature tells me that I am to be protected and provided for. Mm -hmm. And if a man doesn't feel like it is his duty to do those things for me, then he is not the man for me. Talk it. And, it's, and I'm not ashamed of saying that. I'm not a lazy woman. I'm up at five in the morning getting to it. I do my own PR and marketing at Current, and I'm doing a great job. You know what I'm saying? I'm being offered radio shows and discussions of talk shows. I'm doing a good job, even though I would rather pay somebody else to do it. But you know what? There's times where it's not in the budget because I can pay people to do things for me myself. Right? I'm not a lazy woman. I go get money. I hustle. But I don't feel like it's my job to hustle, cater to you, 
Because I believe that, like, if a man is a hardworking man, he should be catered to. You know what I mean? And I feel like men like their plates made and they like yeah. the hot meals. They like they back rubbed and, mm -hmm. you know, they want to feel like home is home. Then guess what? It doesn't come for free. These women are going to work. Your mama has to work nine to five, come home, cook, clean. She was exhausted. She was surviving. You want that for your wife? You don't realize that your mom was struggling and stressed out? You don't realize that she was coming from a place of, of desperation? And you think that I want to sign up for that position? And then you want to have children? And you think that she's supposed to still work and, and take care of your children, raise them, teach them to be so smart? And then, no, that's two full-time jobs. And I'm not, I don't sign up to do all of that. I've never signed up to, my, my father did not sacrifice for his daughter to marry somebody who wants her to live in poverty or to be a slave. When I have to work a full-time job and come home and another full-time job of taking care of a man, and then you want her to do somersaults in the bedroom and have energy for everything else, I'm sorry, you got to pick one. What do you want? You want a woman that just go get a check every day that works at nine to five and going to pay half the bills? And um, or do you want a woman that is happy to have your children, raise your children the way you want them raised, okay. cater to you, be available to you at your disposal and help support the goals and the dreams of the overall family. And I think that these are things that are kind of a lost art. And that doesn't mean that she doesn't have dreams of her own. Right. It doesn't mean she doesn't work. I have, it, I come from, I have a community of girlfriends that are housewives that actually became more successful than their husbands from being home. Right. You know, oh, my son had eczema. I developed these products. And guess what? Shout out to my girl, Saraja. Like she has, um, a brand where skincare brand it got ended up getting in the hands of Gabriel Union and guess what she started making um a scale a six figure business now that she started in her living room as a stay at home wife my friend Summer she has this company called Always Beans vegan bean burgers navy bean pats because she's like a chef she cooks so well that man she plated that man's food every night was set the table for dinner every day you know what I mean she was a housewife and got good and you know she ended up getting a factory and getting the staff to help her with all the orders she was getting and now from home she was able to have a six figure bit well she didn't make six figures yet but like she's she's getting a paycheck from home yeah, why from home. because she was given the freedom to rest in her feminine place and say you know what i really love cooking and he then invested in her catering hall now she's catering event space so just because a woman says hey I want to be a stay-at-home wife. It doesn't mean she's airheaded. It doesn't mean she doesn't have goals or dreams. I'm a recording yeah. artist. You know what I mean? I, I do a lot of different things. I love writing for my blog. I love sitting here with you right. and giving information and knowledge to the masses. Yeah. You know? So I think that when it comes to femininity and masculinity, I think that the, the discussion of what that looks like and how it should be done to not only benefit capitalism, because that's really what women in the workforce benefits. You know, we live in a capitalistic nation, so women are no longer at home. Guess what? There's more more people for the workforce. And, you know, six weeks maternity leave and paternity leave is crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so no. Femininity, I could talk on this topic all day. In fact, I used to on Clubhouse all the time. And I used to charge ladies $75 for 30 minutes of my time. And you know what? I might go back to it the more I talk to you. Right. Yeah, because y'all apparently need it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's needed. It's needed all day, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm so happy that the topic came back to me because I'm like, oh, no, we got to expound on this a little bit. But listen, let us know where we can find you. Thank you so much, so, so much for your time, especially during uh, um, your, your journey of Ramadan for this year. I know it's not easy. I know it's late right now. I know you've been up all, uh, you've been a, all day, you know, trying to hydrate yourself. I know you got to go to sleep soon and get up early, but, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for this time. It means thank so you for much having to me. me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. And thank you for considering us, you know. Thank yeah. you for considering conversation with Zoe and making this happen. So yeah. let us know where we can find you. Shout out everybody and anything you got to shout out, please. Well, first and foremost, you can find me, Lish2x, Lish2times, on all streaming platforms. If you really love me, you're going to subscribe to my YouTube because that's the platform that I'm very focused on right now. 
um, Lish2X. I'm there. Uh, go to Lish2X.com. Subscribe for updates for my blog. So all of our carpet events that I go to, I always do recaps. If um, I go, I do a recap. And sometimes I talk about other things that's going on in pop culture, social news, all that good stuff. So yes, Lish2X the blog. And um, yeah, I'm here. The Ramadan album Reloaded. It is a universal message for all. And I really think you should give it an ear because you're going to take something away from it. You're going to learn something from it. And I hope that you listen to the album and you walk away feeling inspired. And if you don't, DM me and tell me about myself. But I'm, I'm saying, right. yeah, follow me, all that good stuff. And tap in, book me the host, whatever it is. I'm outside, okay? I'm here and I'm in Texas. I live here, I'm in Texas, back and forth. Love that. Yeah. We out. Ow. Peace. Peace. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, check us out. Yeah, and subscribe to, to his channel too. Let's do it, man. And okay. shout out to all the women really holding it down out there. Shout out to my sisters. In oh. A, in, in a feminine space. In a feminine space. And I got to shout out my producer, Ali the Greatest, who produced the Ramadan album yes. completely. Um, I'd be remiss to not um, announce Ali the Mother Checking Greatest. Right. But yeah, we outside. We outside. You going to come to an Iftar? I'm doing an Iftar on Sunday. Iftar on Sunday, what's Sunday? Sunday's Easter, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so got family day for sure. Well, bring the family. For sure. Dinner's at 7, well, 6.30, but okay. 7 o'clock we're going to be eating with or without y'all. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Mm. Peace and love, world. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, support the channel, show your love. You know what I'm saying? We, we have a great conversation week in and week out. You never know who's coming. You never know what we're going to do. But at the end of the day, it's all about peace and love. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment.